Chair call Shauna Hogsden. Ms. Hogsden, we have you registered as Shauna Hogsden representing Texas Adoptee Rights uh, Coalition and yourself and you're testifying today for the bill. Is That's that correct? correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Shauna Hodson, and I'm testifying today in favor of House Bill 2006. I'm a Texas-born adoptee, and I'm a sixth-generation Texan by birth. I'm the spokesperson of the Texas Adoptee Rights Coalition, and I serve on the board of American Adopt Adoption Congress and Adoptees United. Current Texas law requires adult adoptees to know the names of the people listed on their original birth certificate to qualify for a non-certified copy, or adoptees may petition the court where their adoption was finalized. Beginning in the mid-2000s, I made two attempts at petitioning a Harris County court for my own information. On the first attempt, my petition was immediately denied. The judge stated that he could find no just cause to grant my request. What is just cause for wanting your own vital birth, birth certificate? Non-adopted Texans are not required to show just cause for requesting their own documents. On my second petition attempt, a different judge insisted I get permission, a permission letter from my adoptive parents. I was 40 years old at the time, a business owner, a mother of four children, one of whom was in college. My adoptive parents, of course, were more than happy to write the letter for me, but on principle, I refused to go that route. How infantilizing it is, it is it to stand in front of a courtroom full of people and have a judge tell you to get your parents' permission for anything, let alone your own documents. It was about as infantilizing as it is for me, with all due respect, to stand before you today and make a case for why I, as a taxpayer, a business owner, a wife, a mother of four grown children, deserve the basic right to my own vital record of birth. All I wanted was my birth certificate, but when I turned to the state for the document they created in my name for my benefit, to document my birth, I was denied. In 2014, after becoming exhausted by the court process, I decided to use DNA testing to identify my birth family. I submitted my samples to three different companies and, took, and seven months later, after a second cousin match turned up, I identified my birth family. It only took me four hours to identify my birth mother from that match. And I think you guys all have a handout um, there and it's two different images, they're flow charts. One is a picture of like, what it would look like if you went through DNA testing, and then the other is just straight access, which is what HB 2006 will provide for us if enacted. Um, so I was now eligible to re request my original birth certificate, so I drove to Austin a month later, made the request, and received my birth certificate one week later. The state could no longer deny me what was mine, but I was very wrong in thinking that. Hurricane Harvey hit in 2017, and my family and I were forced to evacuate our house in the early morning hours. We lost our home and nearly all of our belongings, including the copies of my original birth certificate. Months later, I requested a second copy of my original birth certificate and was denied. The reason, the Vital Statistics Office informed me that I was only eligible for one lifetime copy. I pushed back and enlisted the help of my colleague, Gregory Luce, who's an adoptee rights attorney. After several letters and emails, the state finally conceded and fulfilled my request. This was yet another reminder of the systemic bias against adopted people and how when we try to exercise what rights we do have, we are repeatedly denied as a result. The bias exists as a result of the prevailing myths and tropes about adopted people and the culture of secrecy that has tainted adoption practices for nearly a century. The same secrecy that hid my existence from my older biological brother, who was three when I was born. With guidance from the adoption agency, a family member told him I had died at birth and even showed him a gravestone, my gravestone, a few rows down from our grandparents in our East Texas Family Cemetery. And I actually brought a picture of that gravestone um, today. And it says infant marshal, you'll see it. <laughs> and I've actually never spoken about this publicly, so I'm a little emotional, I apologize. Um, I was also always acutely aware of how secrecy harmed me as an adoptee but it wasn't until I stood over my own grave with my brother did I realize how absurd it truly was. The truth will always come out no matter how deeply you try to bury it. Someone tried to bury me, but here I am. Adoptees are often argued over and used as political footballs, but we are rarely, if ever, included in laws that seal our own birth records and ultimately make us disappear. But we keep searching and we find our truths even though we're told we don't deserve them even when we're told our erased identity is the price that we should pay for being adopted. 
all of us, every single one of us, all of you everywhere in the world, regardless of the systems that brought us into this world, have an inherent human right to know who we are and from whence we come. A birth certificate is not a mechanism by which to deny human being knowledge of their own origins. It was created to inform the person to whom it was registered. It was created before an adoption occurred and is not an adoption record. It is a birth record. And yes, a genealogical record. I'm the fourth great granddaughter of Elizabeth Goodnight, sister of Texas char hero Charlie Goodnight. I can now proudly pass that document down to my own children. If Texas is to pride itself on being a pro-adoption state, it can start by treating those of us who live adoption for from the cradle to the grave with dignity and, most of all, equality. I thank you for your time and consideration, and I urge you to vote yes to advance House Bill 2006. Ms. Ogden, thank you for your testimony. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you for your persistence. And I started listening so intently, I forgot to cut you off at three minutes. So. And I realized I heard a little beep, and I thought, I think I'm over <laughs> my time, but they're going to let me go. But it was, it was very, very uh, illustrative, and we appreciate the, um, the written materials as well. Are there any questions for the witness? Really, thank you for being here. We appreciate thank you it. All. Thank you.